Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Gulf of Mexico. I'm here with John Seegers from Signature Landscape Corp. It's the second time on the program. Welcome back, John. Thank you, sir. Really excited to hear how your day went, man. It looked like it was pretty uh, wild. It was awesome. I, I, I'm still giddy about it. Cool. Well, we're going to dive into that and much, much more in today's program. want to give some thank yous and shout outs today for everyone making this possible, having the time and space, John, for me to come from Atlanta, you to come from Illinois. Chicago area. Chicago area uh, to the beautiful Gulf of Mexico uh, to make this program today. I want to say thank you to all the companies that made this possible. The Launchpreneur Academy uh, with Brian and Liz Fullerton over there. Very generous to... Uh, get us this house for the week. Amazing. Yes, sir. And also our friends from beautiful Fairfield County, Ohio. I don't know <laughs> if that's a pun as we're here in beautiful Sarasota County, Florida. Uh, but the Hardscape Academy, Brittany Allman and Caleb Allman, uh, they teamed up with the Entrepreneur Academy to put this whole event on. So it's just phenomenal. And in addition to that, I'm actually out here traveling uh, for my kickoff tour and getting in-person interviews. And so thanks to Xmark, Company Cam, and Kohler Engines for making all of this possible. So, John, what did y'all get into today, man? I was back here at the Green Industry Hype House, and y'all were doing something fancy-schmancy out there. Right. So uh, we woke up a little early, got on the road, uh, and we got permission to come to a quarry down here in Florida. Okay. What is a quarry? A quarry is where they mine stone. So um, what was interesting about it is it's very different from the way they do it in Illinois, where we just a big old rock and we dig holes and dig holes this they're doing with the water table being so high mm -hmm. so you can dig in the ground places in the state and like hit water within a couple feet i think that that's amazing wow mm -hmm. and then the machine was like 95 tons yeah 95 tons i mean that machine in order to move it i think they take five or six semis it take apart it's just too big too heavy wow yeah it was, it was amazing, and we got to stand in front of it, kind of get explained on how they quarry the rock, you know, with dynamite and how they use the water to the advantage and how busy it is down here. Uh, and then when we thought the tour was done, he takes us on site where they use all the stone. They're like, yeah, we're building this road. We're doing this sidewalk. We're building this pond. It was amazing. Yeah, that that's really cool. So what else have been your takeaways this week hanging out with uh, Brex Enterprises, Annie Mulder, and so many other folks that are in – Construction, landscape, hardscape industries. What have you learned from all of this? You know, I try to be a sponge this whole uh, this whole trip and just learn from you social media guys and how well you guys do the, what you do and all the ins and outs. And um, I've loved hanging out with uh, AJ over at Brex, you know, a company that does 10 times the revenue I do and just hear about his struggles. And, you know, he kept on saying, you know, it, it's uh, it's just adding zeros to your problems. You know, you're, it's, mm -hmm. just, it's just times 10, whatever you're doing. Our mistakes cost a little bit more. Our victories, you know, praise a little bit harder. Yeah, because they do $10 million in revenue, so that's $27,000 a day. Yeah. A lot of money. You did that in your head, man. I thought I was a math guy. I did on my calculator uh. earlier. <laughs> I was just curious. I did 10 mil yeah. divided by 365 and figured it out. Yeah, when he's talking about like 1,500, 2,000 gallons of fuel a day, I'm like, <laughs> man, that is a lot. Yeah, well, his insurance bill was like $387,000 last year. No way. Yeah. Did you have him on the podcast as well? Yeah, we had him on the show, and he was just saying, we, thought was, well, we had him and his wife on the show, but she was just saying that at the end of the day, if you want to make you know, $200,000, ideally it'd be better if you did it with as small as revenue as possible. Mm -hmm. Because if you're... If you're uh, getting these big numbers but your profit margins aren't there it's just a, too much problems to put out so yeah you got to be efficient and that's something i was working on um even before i started with the instagram and all this stuff two three years ago mm -hmm. just trying to stay relevant and uh, catching up to you guys but uh you know tagging or sorry following people like andy who's you know the master of efficiency and yeah. uh just just learning yeah well you seem like you've been pretty efficient with the basement remodel man i've been enjoying watching mm -hmm. you know the height of the ceiling and all these problems you're coming into so tell us i know this is a little side hobby story but right. it, tell us about this project you've been working on and post on instagram right so i recently started remodeling my basement um or sorry finishing it in illinois uh, we got full basements a nine foot basement mm -hmm. and i'm just trying to create a space for my kids you know my my uh, my oldest daughters are going to be nine this year twins so yes my twins and um, and I'm just trying to create a space that works for them for an extra play area, maybe an area they can watch TV with their friends, you know, have a sleepover, 
um, an area, a social area outside of their bedrooms. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. And did you have experience building basements or are you just kind of learning on the fly or how, how did you have the know how to, to do all this? I have a little bit of knowledge. You pick it up here and there on the way. Um, my dad finished our basement when I was a kid and you know, I have a decent group of people around me to pick my brain, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't bring in a little help. Um, I have one contractor um, that I've bonded with his uh, foreman, and I'm like, hey, you know what? Can you come in and give me a hand with this? So um, I figured that that was well worth its weight uh, just in the tool aspect alone and uh, picking up little tricks and tips from him as well as we go. You know, I'll be working on a wall. He'll be working on a wall. He's like, hey, here's a little tr you know, trick. And Yeah, what else do you have to do to finish the job? So we'll have to, you know, first frame it all out. Then we'll have to do electric plumbing. Um, and then uh, once we make all those decisions, we'll have to start working on the bathroom, drywall paint, and the normal stuff. We're, it's probably a year-long project for me. I'm going to be doing it in my spare time. There is no big rush. There isn't family coming in from out of town that i got to have it ready for. But uh, that was another perk of it is to you know, have a guest room so that um, my family, who's all moved out of state, mm -hmm. uh, has a place to come when uh, they want to come visit. That's fantastic. So... As you get ready to go back to Frigid, Illinois, what have been your takeaways from uh, being here this week? And as you kind of recap what you've learned uh, being around, you know, kind of a mastermind group of, of folks in different uh, construction, landscaping, successful businesses. Oh, man, I'm loving these lives that we're doing at night and the topics that you guys are all sending in um, because, you know, we're talking all weekend, but we're just starting whole new conversations on these lives. So I encourage anybody to, you know, tune in to those. Um, and it's just been awesome, like I said, hanging out with these lawn maintenance guys to learn so much about the social media and the YouTube and um, all these elements that I'm not currently participating in. You know, I'm a one-man Instagram warrior. <laughs> like that's, that's all I know. So to do these podcasts and YouTube, and uh, that's just amazing how you guys uh, do it, and I'm blown away. Yeah, it's really encouraging being around these content creators to take it very serious. It, it really puts a... Um, motivation in me to to take it serious to to post and to uh, be consistent and things of that nature yeah and I'm, I'm obviously listen to you all but to see how it's made is just you know the back door to peek inside here and now be a a guest is uh is amazing yeah because if you watch like a movie or tv and at the end of the movie or or tv program even on a tv i was watching uh i wasn't watching i was at the gym when this show was on the TV, and then at the end, they have the credits that just roll down the screen. And I was counting. I was like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and just kept going and going. I was like, it's like 55 people, you know, involved in making this 30 minute TV show. And then if you yeah. get to a movie, it's, you know, even longer. That's what they call it, right? Credits? Credits. At the yeah. End? yeah. And so with us, it's like a duct tape operation. It might be a one man show or two or three or four. But it's it's real tight. Talking to you guys and seeing, you know, all the people behind the scenes, like I didn't realize, you know, you have Mr. Producer. I, I always hear his ads, you know, yeah. and I hear, um, you know, about all these people that you guys are employing to make this content for everybody. It's 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 amazing the investment that you guys are making. I'm glad that you recognize that. And it's definitely refreshing to be around others doing it. And it kind of gives you a second wind, so to speak. Oh, for sure. Because, um, you know, a lot goes in the, to this for years before the payoff. So you guys are just long-term focused and that's, that's just, you know, your nose is to the grindstone. Totally. So what do you got uh, planned for this year? What are kind of your company goals as you, as you head on back? What, what would you like to accomplish this year in your landscaping business? Uh, my goal is to replicate last year. It was a good year. Um, I'm not, I scaled back on snow this year. So if I could hit that same you know top line number, that would be great. But we all know it's about that bottom line number. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I'm looking to do a little bit more travel in my families, try to focus on weekends uh, as being a time off. Uh -huh. And uh, I got a few projects in the works. Um, we're waiting on some pricing to come in. You know, all of our suppliers are playing the catch up. And once we get those numbers, we can go out and, you know, attack these, uh, these potential projects coming up. Um, I got some cool ones lined up, so I'm excited. Cool. We're going to kick it over to Mr. Producer. We had a, a shift in the sunset here in the Gulf of Mexico, so I'm going to move my camera for those of you watching this on the YouTube. And uh, we'll have more from John from Signature Landscape Corp. I got it right? Yes, sir. Cool. We'll have more John coming right up. All right, guys, we're back. More with John. I moved my camera here. We are on the YouTube. It's a chilly evening here. 62 degrees, man. I know. We had to go put sweatshirts on. I was enjoying that sun. 
Yeah. So when you get back to Illinois, what's what's the temperature now? Who knows? I'm uh, actually had to move my flight a day early because we're expecting. I don't know. Who depends who you talk to, but at least twelve inches of snow. Now they they ever say that, and then you just get a dusting. That's what I remember when I was in kid, and they'd always say, "Hey, got a school day or pardon me, a snow day tomorrow." You get all pumped up as a kid, and right. they they you know word spreads. This is for social media. Snow day tomorrow. Snow day tomorrow, and then. You wake up and is all the time. It could be a big flop, and you might only get an inch or two, but you still have to get ready, and you still have to make preparations. Yeah. So, uh, what is that exactly is your responsibility with the snow? I thought you said you scaled back on that. We did. So I just have a couple accounts, commercial accounts. I can go out and do them four or five hours, but a uh, a, a long shot from what we used to do. You know, going out twenty, thirty hours, and so many pieces of equipment. But um, I'm excited to get back. You know, uh, see my family work on that project we were just talking about, and. Um, enjoy the snow with my kids i mean i, I never get to play in the snow with my kids before because i was always working it so yeah. if we get six to twelve i want to put them out on the sled maybe pull them around the razor and i'm stoked there you go that sounds like fun that's one of the benefits i grew up in ohio so maybe not as much snow as you all get probably because of lake michigan i don't know snows um, a lot in chicago we don't get the lake effect like indiana oh, does okay. I mean, we got some the other day it surprised us all it came in at like seven eight o'clock and nobody was ready everybody was two tracking everywhere but um what's two tracking mean two tracking means the snow plow hasn't come so when you only see two tracks on the road and they're oh. on your, your own tires you're making two you're tracking. making you're making two tracks so if somebody says oh i two track to work today there was no plows plow on the road only there are two tracks there you go that that makes sense so uh when you get back and, and your business you know starts going on the spring what what's your goals for this year what does that look like uh, my goal is to, same as last year, you know, I would like to get 15 to 25 clients, um, depending on the size of the projects that will that will do it. Um, we've pushed off doing meetings until February. Okay. Um, reasoning for that is, you know, uh, I, I, I can't get priced. I can't get past the design phase, and I don't want it to be there to be too long of a cool down phase between a potential design and when I can get them the quote. Mm -hmm. So by um, pushing off the meetings until February, I can start the design process. And the idea is that towards the end of February, early March, the suppliers have caught up and I'll have a decent number. We can hit it and get it and schedule it. That's great. And then how uh, far out will you book these jobs? Um, you know, six weeks is nice, but I mean, we got 12, 14 weeks last year. Um, and there comes to be a point where, you know, you're booked up for that 12 to 14, you take the foot off the accelerator a little bit for sales and you focus in on, let's get these projects done. Execution. Um, with a small company like myself where, you know, I'm out in the field, probably 50% of the time in the office, the other 50%. Mm -hmm. And then with only three employees, um, we're a one crew operation and we're just trying to be as efficient as possible with what we have. And where's all your equipment and things like that set up? So we have a shop in Mokina, Illinois, a little under 3,000 square feet, where I'm a mechanically inclined, inclined person. So we do a lot of the maintenance ourselves in the off season. So that's what I'll do um, when I'm not messing around with snow. And uh, I want to show you my Kia tomorrow. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're here until what time? Uh, not until later in the afternoon. I take off. Okay. I got a, I got a mechanical question for. I'm ready expert. for you. All right. That's the first time buying a Kia. I almost bought a Kia the other day. They came out with that Kia Carnival. Have you seen that? That crossover SUV van? Vaguely. I, I, I think I, I think I know. What My you're wife was about. all excited about it. We drove, you know, we made a date night out of it. Went 45 minutes to the dealer and uh, and uh, had some dinner and then uh, took it out. And then she wasn't thoroughly impressed. She said, buy me another Honda Odyssey. I'm like, all okay. right. Whatever. Julio Jones got me, man. Julio Jones Kia. Yeah. <laughs> In Atlanta. Maybe you all want to sponsor the program, man. There you go. But, uh. I got. I got to show you a little something, something that Kia. See if you could tell me what, what I got to do, man. <laughs> but what about animals? When I watch your Insta Instagram, you you seem like you have like. Uh, <laughs> what, dude, so we're on the borderline of like, a country is not the right word, but cornfields. Cornfields. Um, okay. So we're subdivision livers, um, but the subdivisions do you know back up to the cornfields. Uh, luckily, I have um, while my immediate family brothers and parents aren't in. Most of them aren't in the state. I do have some uncles, and uh, they have some land, and we do like a little bit of like a family sharing cow situation. We pick up four to five cows every year, and uh, we raise them until the fall until they stock our freezers. And um, you know, it's an experience for my girls to go out there and feed them. I'm usually the weekend guy because I live closest to the farm, um, so I'll take care of the cows on the weekend and post about them. Um, yeah, so I love it. It gets me that little bit of a country feel, while even though I'm a subdivision boy, so. That's great, man. Mm -hmm. I, I used to live with a family out in the country on 35 acres, and they had all kind of animals, and it was it was just so much fun, man. It was like life slowed down, and 
I loved it. Yeah, we, we had, uh, not this year, but the past year, we had chickens, we had ducks, we had roosters, we had uh, all sorts of stuff. We had some turkeys. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, they didn't all make it. You know, that's kind of the country life. You know, some of them get swapped up by hawks or whatnot, but coyotes. Yeah. But uh, the cows, yeah, the cows are a uh, at the talk of my town because everybody drives by them, everybody checks on them, and heaven forbid, my goodness, they get out of their containment. Uh, my phone lights up. You know, I got... I got everybody Ta- letting me know. Saw the cow down on uh, yeah, like, Martin hey. Luther King Jr. Boulevard. Yeah, it's getting close to Lairway Road. I'm like, oh, man, that's my dinner. Don't hit it. Oh, <laughs> like, man. I got to go get that thing. So, so. so how, how do you turn it into food in the freezer? What's that process? Uh, the process of that is we bring it over to the butcher. Uh, they uh, take care of that. And then uh, the, the meat hangs for two weeks usually before it's sent over to, I don't know what the formal term is, but the guy that makes the cuts. Um I guess it would be slaughterhouse then butcher. Yeah, so that that's the formal term, I guess. Okay. Um, and then uh, you know you pick your your cuts and how well, how you like your steaks: T-bone, porterhouse, fillet, ribeye. What do you like? Ooh, I like. Uh, I'm a big fan of having my burgers pre-made, and I'm not a big guy T-bone porterhouse. That's like when you're bone in. Um, so I'd I'd rather take the fillet and like you know the uh, the strip steak. Okay. Yeah, um, I love a strip steak. Oh yeah, make some make some tacos and all that kind of stuff. Little skirt steak in there too. What do you use to um, grill them or cook them or whatnot? Um, What's your go-to? My go-to? I got a nice little Weber grill outside, you know, okay. and uh, cook up them burgers. But um, I've been Googling recently, you know, how to cook a steak well. So I'm like, I'm, uh, <laughs> I have oh. to. <laughs> yeah. So like, I've been messing around with my ribeyes. My wife will marinate them for like a day. She's like, all right, how you get, how you going to cook them tonight? And I'm like, you know what? I, I read this guy. He, he cranks that grill all the way up okay. and he puts it on. Um, Oh shoot! I I had the notes on my phone, but something crazy like a uh, hundred, hundred and thirty seconds aside. But he cranks his grill up to like six, seven hundred, so it sears it. And then the resting period with the garlic butter, you know, on the wood board. So I play around with it. I'm no chef, that's for sure, but I I enjoy it. So you heat you heat it up to six hundred if it'll go that high. Yes. And then you said uh, two minutes. Yeah, it's around two minutes per side. So um, and then it's it's gonna be I don't it's not rare, but it's probably close to medium rare. Okay. But because it's so hot, then I let it rest and uh, put then, the butter on it. Then it then you put more of them, and then 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 it goes to like medium, which is how my, many my, minutes my do you let it rest for? I forget what it was. I think it's right around like ten minutes. But you you let it rest with covered in like tin foil, so it's still staying pretty warm. And it was just six hundred degrees. So I mean, mm. it's it's hot. But uh, yeah, I've been playing around with it a little bit. That sounds delicious. Although tonight we're having pizza. My wife forgot to pull the steaks before I left because I'm like, hey, you know, we got uh, the new cow coming in pretty soon. Like, you know, I still got about five ribeyes in there. Let's do this before I leave. She forgot. She's like, oh, it'll be a special treat when you come home. I'll have them all marinated and you can oh, there you go. throw them on the grill and we'll, we'll do this up right. So, some home cooking and some uh, quality time with the family. Exactly. Man. So I get treated to 12 inches of snow and ribeye steaks. There you go. And tonight we're having pizza mm. at the Hype House. You know, we eat as well as we play here it is is a good time yeah and, and again thanks to brian and, and liz and caleb and Brittany because they they're they pay for the food every single night for mm-hmm. all of us they feed 20 people the lodging here guys it's so nice they are gracious i've hosts. never been on vacation in such luxury have you ah no no this is this is amazing and i uh i'm 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 really appreciative i'm trying to do anything i can buy his coffee buy his fuel anything he's just he's just an awesome guy caleb and and uh and brian as well yeah, so uh, you guys, you know, do do what you can to express your gratitude. I wouldn't be able to bring you this kind of content uh, without uh, Brian and Liz and, and Caleb and Brittany, Entrepreneur Academy, Hardscape Academy, making all this possible. So we appreciate them. Yes, thank you to them, and this is awesome. Cool. Well, anything else you want to share with the, the Green Industry Podcast audience? It's kind of crazy, man. I Sometimes I think about it, and I'm like, this is beyond – anything i ever dreamed of but there's people that listen to the show in australia really denmark <laughs> uh, Den- where's denmark it's in europe <laughs> just messing with you canada <laughs> all across the united states so this past month january we had over I just showing Brittany almond over a hundred thousand downloads in one month i but watched that uh talk- sorry i listened to that episode that, that was the million downloads. oh really yeah but then oh this this somehow month somehow a show just keeps like it's weird, but the algorithm picks it up the better you do. Mm-hmm. And then last month was our record. We had over 100,000 people listening. Congratulations. To, thank you. Listening to talk shop about lawn care and landscaping. So it's just like, I could see if you did a show on like marketing, like Gary V or business, mm-hmm. like some folks or finance, like Dave Ramsey, mm-hmm. like, you know, you open yourself up to 
a huge uh, um, potential audience. But when you do a show about the green industry, it's like hi, there's only 604,000 registered businesses out there. Being an owner can be lonely, and I yeah. think all these channels, everybody here is just doing such an excellent job of you know inclusion and getting fresh you know guests on here and. Yeah. And just making sure that we don't feel alone and that there's a question out there that you can DM anybody here and that they'll answer or give you a little bit of their time. It's just, it's amazing what this social media is doing for our industry. Yeah, because when I started, John, I was making so many mistakes on pricing, on foundational, you know, mm -hmm. having everything right, you know, a good bookkeeper. Who wasn't? You know, I didn't even have a good bookkeeper, let alone, or a bookkeeper, let alone a good one. And so, shout out to Megan and Joey, Gulf Coast Bookkeeping. That's my bookkeepers I use now. There you go. But, um, you know, I started to try to talk to people in the neighborhoods, and they just mean mug me or look down on me because I had a raggedy truck and a, you know, raggedy mower. Everything was raggedy. No one was helping me. Mm -hmm. You know, I, thank God I had Jamie and Rich and Kenny and a few people I wrote about in my books. But, you know, I real, realistically, I only talked to them like once a month. But then you get to Kid Contractor Podcast, Fullerton Unfiltered Podcast, you know, all these podcasts, Green Street Podcasts, of course. And we get to talk to folks like you, and you share what you're learning. Everything's just elevating in the industry. It's really cool. It's for sure. You know, I just finished a, a podcast with Brian as well, and I'm like, you know what? The My main goal in 2020 switched over. I spent the first decade of my business, 10 years, um, um, kind of living to work. Like, that was my focus. It's just anything I could do to grow my business and work. And it wasn't, it hit me in during COVID that, uh, you know, I want to, I want to flip that philosophy and I want to work to live. Mm -hmm. So, um, I want a comfortable living, but I want to, you know, I don't want to look back and think I missed out on things. So that has been my switch to reinvest in my family with camping trips, finishing the basement and, uh, doing a bunch of traveling this winter with my daughters, just trying to live life a little bit. Cool. Well, how can people follow along on the Instagram and watch your, uh, you finish that basement Pay attention to your business and, and just uh, be your friend online. Um, I would recommend you go on Instagram. Follow me at Signature Landscape Corp. Um, I love doing daily stories. I love uh, talking about anything that I'm doing, whether it's finish the basement, doing maintenance on my ditch witch, or every detail I can of our hardscape projects. Cool. We'll follow him over there, and uh, we'll go, go hang out with the boys. I'm ready. The girls. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks. And listening.